Hello everyone, I am Dreamcraft WD and today I want to talk to you about Arknights. Before starting, let me just take a moment to remind you that if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you like the content of my channel, support it by hitting the subscribe button and remember to click the bell so that you get notifications every time a new video is uploaded. Arknights is a Chinese mobile tower defense RPG that was launched on January 16th. I have been playing it since then and I want to share with you my personal experience, my likes and dislikes and also some tips. I would divide this game into three parts that although they work together for the same objective, the way you play them is very different. First, the combats, where the real action is. Second, managing the squads and the base. Last, but far from being the least, completing missions. So let's take a closer look at each one of them. The action is exactly where you start when you start playing Arknights. The story begins with you being awakened from your cryogenic sleep by Amiya and some other operators from Rhodes Island that hope you can help them in their mission. In a world submerged by catastrophes, where companies play all their cards just to get their hands on the new resource called Originium, and the people that are infected by it are being cast out, Rhodes Islands is counting on you to find a cure and lead them in this fight against the discrimination and intolerance. From that moment on, you are their combat strategists, so you are the one deciding who, where and when the operators are deployed. All combats are different. If sometimes the same map is used, the enemies that are in it are different, forcing you to choose a different approach. This is one of the things I like the most because you never get comfortable. The mechanic of the game is easy. The enemies come from the red entrances and the objective is to prevent them from reaching the blue exits. They will follow the red flow shown. When this flow is gold, it means that enemies are drones that will fly over you. Also, the maps bring you challenges, as they can make you weaker or give you advantages. Some maps are just clean with clear ways. Some have generators that will stun your enemies when activated, and others have tiles that lower your operation's defense or have an atmosphere that can kill you in a few seconds. While I was going through the story, new features were being unlocked, like recruits, store, supplies, base, chips and annihilation. All new features unlocked are explained to you by your operators, but if you forget or skip the animation, just search for the little eye icon for the information. Each stage you clear gives you rewards. If you clear it with 3 stars, you will get up to 3 Originite Prime. And if you do it without using support units, you will also unblock the auto-deploy mode, which is very practical for farming the resources. But be aware that sometimes it may malfunction and not give you the 3 stars, getting you less rewards. In this case, you need to intervene. You can always resave it after. Also, I want to mention how much I liked that the tutorials are not at the beginning, with a huge amount of time trying to pass them all just to forget everything after. Instead, they are spread across the several episodes, getting you what you need just before you need it. Oh right, I forgot to tell you that the story is divided in episodes. By the time I've created this video, the story had the prologue and four more episodes. I am still clearing episode 2. One thing I believe it is important for you to know is that the stages are labeled with letters and numbers. The letters identify the mission and the numbers their progression level. So on prologue, for example, you have the missions 0 and numbers from 1 to 11. Why is this important? Well, because you will find messages like need to clear CA4 mission area clearance with two stars to unblock. So what this means is that you need to go to supplies, aerial threat and clear level 4. Also important is that each mission in supplies and in chips are only available in certain days of the week. So plan your upgrades in advance so that you do not end up not being able to perform them because the resource you need cannot be farmed that day. Yes, that has happened to me. To clear the level, I needed to promote my sniper, but I was lacking two chips. That day the mission was closed, so I had to delay the promotion and the level clearance by one day. Now let's take a look at Man 
management. After you unlock your home, you can easily access each feature you have. You can go to combats for farming resources or clearing more levels. You can manage your squads and your operators. You can access the store or the operator's recruitment section. And you can check your missions or access your base so that you can manage it. On your right corner, you can see that it is also possible to access your friends and your profile from here, as well as the information section. Your profile is important because it is where you select the operators that you will make available for other players to use as support units, and the information about you that other players will see. Also, do not do like I did. As you can see, I have almost no friends, so I don't get many credits. What do I mean? You will see later in this video that credits are something that are very useful, especially if you want to play without spending any money. So start making friends from the beginning and just fill those friend slots. The information section is quite interesting because it shows you all operators you have already unlocked and their relations with others. You can also check information about your enemies and, what for me is super interesting, the trust levels by operators' teams and the rewards you can get when you reach a certain level of trust for that team. All these rewards are furniture that you can use in your dorms. So what do you have to manage? First, operators. You will not be able to do anything without operators, but stress not. The game will grant you at least 11 operators just in the prologue. Episode 1 will give you 4 more. In the meantime, you can also recruit them using the recruit or the headhunt. And believe me that you will want to have more and more. At least that happens to me. First, because the drawings are amazing. They are super cute. Look at my hibiscus with her new costume. How could you not want to have her? And here she is in action. She looks so cute. Well, they all do. So here you have a mix of wanting to collect them and needing them for your squad. I do for both reasons. Well, I will not go into the details of recruitment, but I leave you here in the description the link to a video that is amazing. I only saw it three days ago and discovered that I have been doing it all wrong this entire month. But my luck sucks in RNG anyways, so I always get the lowest stars operator possible, even with all the correct planning and recruiting. Now that you have the operators, you need to keep them upgraded. In Arknights, you will have to upgrade the operator's level, their abilities level, and improve their potential. Again, this topic is very well explained in the video that I mentioned before and that you can find right now here in the top right corner or below in my description. The only thing I want to underline is that you will not get, for example, two beagles. When you recruit the same operator, what you will gain is a duplicate token and this is what you will use to improve your operator's potential. But what to do with them when your operator's potential is fully upgraded? Easy! You exchange them in the store for commendations or if they are from 4 stars operators or higher, you can exchange them for distinctions. Later on this video, I will show you the store and what you can get with credits, commendations, distinctions and purchase certificates. But let's continue. The operators alone will not win a fight, so you need to organize them in squads. And if you are thinking that you put one dream squad together and that is it, think again. As I said before, each map has their own particulars, so sometimes you will need more snipers and casters, other times you need more medics and defenders. It all depends on the map you are playing in. Now, the base. Managing the base is where I spend most of my time. The base has a control center, it can have up to 4 factories or 4 trading posts, 3 power stations, 4 dormitories, a reception room, a workshop, an HR office and a training room. I don't have them all yet, like the training room for example, so I will only speak of what I have. What are they for? Well, the control center is the first room and the one that allows all the base to be created. Also here you can assign operators to be your assistants and gain more trust daily. My assistants are operators from Reserve Op Team A1, the group that I chose to upgrade trust so that I can get the coach rack reward for my dorm. Normally, players choose operators they want to use in their squads because trust also improves some operators' characteristics. The power stations provide energy for all your rooms in each floor, so you need to check if the energy cost of the room that you want to activate is still under the max that 
that your power station is giving. Otherwise, you will need to upgrade your power station first. In the factory, you can produce resources for you or to exchange for LMDs in the trading post. So, the trading post is where you can trade resources for LMDs. The reception room allows you to research clues and acts like a welcome room when your friends visit you. As soon as you gather all seven clues, you can unlock the exchange. Remember when I said you needed friends? Well, this is where they come in hand. First, you can get credits by giving them clues. Then you get more credits when you visit them. You get also credits when they give you clues. And if they visit you when the exchange is active, you get a bunch of credits. In the workshop, you can create resources for the base and for the operator's upgrades, as well as furniture parts. The HR office allows you to get more slots in the recruit section and also the possibility to refresh up to three times the tags available for recruit. And finally, the dormitory. These are the rooms I like the most because you can decorate them. You can get the furniture in some missions in the episodes, in the store, or like mentioned before, by reaching certain group trust points. The only thing I don't like here is that you cannot rotate your furniture. That is really annoying and kind of destroys some decorations, but I'm trying to work around it. Each furniture contributes with environment points that will make your operators gain energy faster. Talking about operators, all these rooms need to be maintained, so you will need to assign them operators. Be sure to check the operator's logistics to know where they can be more effective. Also, don't forget to check on them from time to time because their energy will go down and if it reaches zero, then the operator gets distracted and will not be efficient anymore. What to do then? Send him to the beautiful dorms you are decorating so that he can recover and put a substitute in his place. And we reach the missions. In the missions section, you will find four tabs. The highlight missions, the daily missions, the weekly weekly missions and the campaign missions. These missions consist in tasks that you would do anyways, but now you feel compelled in doing them sooner so that you can get the rewards. The daily missions refresh every day and the weekly missions every Monday. I live in Germany, GMT plus one, and the day in game here changes at 12 pm. So what is for me a normal day of playing Arknight? When I get my morning coffee, I always get my recruited operators that are left overnight and check my bed. I replace my tired operators, sending them to the dorms, I check if the factories are still producing and I attend to the requests in the trade post. Then I go to the chips and supplies to farm some chips and resources. All using auto deploy, of course. This for like 10 minutes, not more. Before closing, I check my store to be sure the credits are not above 300, and if they are, I buy something to lower them and I set more recruiting for 9 hours. Then I come back at 12 pm when the day changes. I collect my operator's trust, check again for their energy and replace some if needed, check the factory's production and attend any request that may be pending. I then go to the store to collect my daily credits and buy things there. With this, I already completed some of the daily missions. Around dinner time, I get my recruited operators and check the base again. I play some Annihilation to get Orundum and check the store to see if there is something I want to buy and if I have how to buy it. Before going to bed, I make sure I leave all operators working the base with enough energy for the night, I set my new recruits for 9 hours and I do some more farming for 10 to 15 minutes. Normally, by this time, all daily quests are already finished, if not, they will be in the morning. Some days I will dedicate some time to upgrade my operators and work on clearing some stages. Now the big question, can you play it for free? Hell yeah, I have been playing it for one month and so far I have not spent a cent and I will not spend a cent because I need to set an example for my daughter. If I tell her she cannot spend money on mobile games, then mama can also not. So let's take a look at the store. Here you can find in the last three tabs all you can buy without spending any money. In the certificates, you can buy headhunting permits, recruit permits and all kinds of resources with your commendations. This you win every time you get a duplicate operator and you can also exchange your duplicate tokens to obtain more. With the distinctions, you can buy operators, more resources and tokens to improve your operator's potential. The distinctions you 
gain whenever you get a new operator or you can exchange the duplicate tokens of operators that are 4 stars or higher. With the shop vouchers, you can also buy operators and tokens to improve your operator's potential. These shop vouchers are the purchase certificates that you gain in missions or you can farm in supplies tough siege. In the furniture store, you can find all the furniture, including some special pieces that you cannot find in the normal store that you are accessed by the dorm screen. What I do to be able to buy them all is to always complete the daily and weekly missions because they give you a lot. The daily gives you 60 furniture parts and the weekly 200. Besides that, I found these parts in supplies resource search. As you probably have already figured it out, I love decorating, so this I farm a lot. The credit store refreshes every day and here you can get resources for half the price and also two operators, Courier and Gavial. They will be available several times which allows you to improve their potential to the maximum by buying their duplicates. So basically I am loving this game and I love that since their launch they have been doing events every single week. On the first week they gave a new outfit for Fang, we just had to clear the prologue. The week after they gave us a Maya's newspaper outfit if we would complete a several sites missions and last week they just gave us an outfit for Ibiscus just for logging in. Also an event story was made available called Granny and the Night's Treasure where you had the possibility of getting getting operator granny and some pizzeria furniture. I will not make guides for this game because I saw there are plenty out there and my favorite ones are without any question Tecton's ones. He is funny and totally insane about this game. You can find the link to his channel appearing now above in the screen. What I did notice though was that in Portuguese you cannot find guides per se. So if my Portuguese native speaker viewers want me to do some videos in Portuguese, just leave it below in the comments with what you want to have explained. Also for everyone, feel free to comment below what you think about the game and make any questions that you may have. I may not be making any guide, but I can always answer your questions. Hope you have enjoyed it and don't leave just yet, check out my other videos. Have you seen Fracture the Open Test already? No? Then go on there and just hit that subscribe button. Until next video, XOXO, DreamCraftWD.